सीआईटी एन सीईआरटी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ साइंस फॉर क्लास सेवन एंटाइटल्ड साइंस दिस इज द लेसन वन न्यूट्रिशन इन प्लांट्स फ्रॉम पेज वन टू पेज टेन लेट्स लिसन टू द लेसन वन nutrition in plants page 1 in class 6th you learnt that food is essential for all living organisms you also learnt that carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals are components of food these components of food are called nutrients and are necessary for our body all living organisms require food plants can synthesize food for themselves but animals including humans cannot they get it from plants or animals that eat plants thus humans and animals are directly or indirectly dependent on plants there's a thought bubble here a picture of bojo is next to it bojo wants to know how plants prepare their own food 1.1 mode of nutrition in plants plants are the only organisms that can prepare food for themselves by using water carbon dioxide and minerals the raw materials are present in their surroundings the nutrients enable living organisms to build their bodies to grow to repair damaged parts of their bodies and provide the energy to carry out life processes nutrition is the mode of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body the mode of nutrition in which organisms make food themselves from simple substances is called autotrophic nutrition here auto means self and trophos means nourishment therefore plants are called autotrophs animals and most other organisms take in food prepared by plants they are called heterotrophs heteros means other there's a thought bubble given here a picture of paheli is next to it paheli wants to know why our body cannot make food from carbon dioxide water and minerals like plants do now we may ask where the food factories of plants are located whether food is made in all parts of a plant or only in certain parts how do plants obtain the raw materials from the surroundings how do they transport them to the food factories of plants 1.2 photosynthesis food making process in plants leaves are the food factories of plants therefore all the raw material must reach the leaf water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by the roots and transported to the leaves carbon dioxide from air is taken in through the tiny pores present on the surface of leaves page 2 these pores are surrounded by guard cells such pores are called stomata we'll understand more about stomata with the help of figure 1.2 c cells you have seen that buildings are made of bricks similarly the bodies 
of living organisms are made of tiny units called cells cells can be seen only under the microscope some organisms are made of only one cell the cell is enclosed by a thin outer boundary called the cell membrane most cells have a distinct centrally located spherical structure called the nucleus the nucleus is surrounded by a jelly like substance called cytoplasm figure 1.1 cell in this figure multiple cells are joined together within each cell is a small circle this circle represents nucleus around the nucleus are tiny dots these tiny dots represent cytoplasm each cell has a boundary of its own this boundary is cell membrane there's a thought bubble given here a picture of bojo is next to it bojo wants to know how water and minerals absorbed by roots reach the leaves water and minerals are transported to the leaves by the vessels which run like pipes throughout the root the stem the branches and the leaves they form a continuous path or passage for the nutrients to reach the leaf they are called vessels you will learn more about transport of materials in plants in chapter 11 there's a thought bubble given here a picture of paheli is next to it paheli wants to know what is so special about the leaves that they can synthesize food but other parts of the plant cannot the leaves have a green pigment called chlorophyll it helps leaves to capture the energy of the sunlight this energy is used to synthesize or prepare food from carbon dioxide and water since synthesis of food occurs in the presence of sunlight it is called photosynthesis the word photo means light and synthesis means to combine so we find that chlorophyll sunlight carbon dioxide and water are necessary to carry out the process of photosynthesis it is a unique process on the earth the solar energy is captured by the leaves and stored in the plant in the form of food thus sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms can you imagine life on earth in the absence of photosynthesis in the absence of photosynthesis there would not be any food the survival of almost all living organisms directly or indirectly depends upon the food made by the plants besides oxygen which is essential for the survival of all organisms is produced during photosynthesis page 3 in the absence of photosynthesis life would be impossible on the earth besides leaves photosynthesis also takes place in other green parts of the plant in green stems and green branches the desert plants have scale or spine like leaves to reduce loss of water by transpiration these plants have green stems which carry out photosynthesis during photosynthesis chlorophyll containing cells of leaves which we will observe in figure 1.2 in the presence of sunlight 
use carbon dioxide and water to synthesize carbohydrates. This we will observe in figure 1.3. The process can be represented in an equation carbon dioxide plus water with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll gives carbohydrate plus oxygen. Figure 1.2 A. This is the picture of a green leaf. B. Section of a leaf. In this picture, we have magnified the leaf further. We can observe chlorophyll, guard cells and stoma. C. This is a further magnified picture of the leaf. We can observe stoma clearly. The stoma has the stomatal opening at its center. The stomatal opening is surrounded by guard cells. Figure 1.3 Diagram showing photosynthesis In this diagram, there is a sunflower. The sunflower is facing the sun and taking light energy from it. This sunflower also has a couple of leaves. These leaves have chlorophyll in them. They are taking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. At the root of the sunflower, we can also observe water and minerals. During the process, oxygen is released. The presence of starch in leaves indicates the occurrence of photosynthesis. Starch is also a carbohydrate. There is a thought bubble given here. A picture of Bojo is next to it. Bojo has observed some plants with deep red, violet or brown leaves. He wants to know whether these leaves also carry out photosynthesis. Activity 1.1 Take two potted plants of the same kind. Keep one in the dark or in a black box for 72 hours and the other in sunlight. Page 4 Perform iodine test with the leaves of both the plants as you did in class 6th. Record your results. Now, leave the pot which was earlier kept in the dark in the sunlight for 3 to 4 days and perform the iodine test again on its leaves. Record your observations in your notebook. The leaves, other than green, also have chlorophyll. The large amount of red, brown and other pigments mask the green colour. We can observe this in figure 1.4. Photosynthesis takes place in these leaves also. Figure 1.4 Leaves of various colours In this picture, we can observe leaves of various colours. These are leaves in diverse colours like violet, yellow, pink, orange and green. You often see slimy green patches in ponds or stagnant water bodies. These are generally formed by the growth of organisms called algae. Can you guess why algae are green in colour? They contain chlorophyll, which gives them the green colour. Algae can also prepare their own food by photosynthesis. Synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates You have just learnt that plants synthesize carbohydrates 
through the process of photosynthesis. The carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. These are used to synthesize other components of food such as proteins and fats. But proteins are nitrogenous substances which contain nitrogen. From where do the plants obtain nitrogen? Recall that nitrogen is present in abundance in gaseous form in the air. However, plants cannot absorb nitrogen in this form. Soil has certain bacteria that convert gaseous nitrogen into a usable form and release it into the soil. These are absorbed by the plants along with water. Also, you might have seen farmers adding fertilizers rich in nitrogen to the soil. In this way, the plants fulfill their requirements of nitrogen along with the other constituents. Plants can then synthesize proteins and vitamins. 1.3 Other Modes of Nutrition in Plants There are some plants which do not have chlorophyll. They cannot synthesize food. How do they survive and from where do they derive nutrition? Like humans and animals, such plants depend on the food produced by other plants. They use the heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Observe figure 1.5. There's a yellow wiry branch structure twining around the stem and branches of a tree. This is a plant called cascuta or amarbale. It does not have chlorophyll. It takes ready-made food from the plant on which it is climbing. The plant on which it climbs is called the host. Since it deprives the host of valuable nutrients, cascuta is called the parasite. Page 5 Are we and other animals also a kind of parasites? You should think about it and discuss with your teacher. Figure 1.5 Cascuta or Amarbale on host plant In this picture, we can observe Cascuta climbing on a host plant. There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Paheli is next to it. Paheli wants to know whether mosquitoes, bed bugs, lice and leeches that suck our blood are also parasites. Have you seen or heard of plants that can eat animals? There are a few plants which can trap insects and digest them. Is it not amazing? Such plants may be green or some other colour. There's a plant in figure 1.6. The pitcher-like or jug-like structure is the modified part of leaf. The apex of the leaf forms a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher. Inside the pitcher, there are hair which are directed downwards. When an insect lands in the pitcher, the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into the hair. The lid closes and the insect is trapped. The insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted in the pitcher and its nutrients are absorbed. Such insect-eating plants are called insectivorous plants. Is it possible that such plants do not get all the required nutrients from the soil in which they grow? There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Bojo is next to it. 
Bojo is confused. If the pitcher plant is green and carries out photosynthesis, then why does it feed on insects? Figure 1.6 Here is a pitcher plant with its lid and pitcher. We can observe the lid of the pitcher plant. There is also the net-like leaf modified into pitcher. 1.4 Saprotrophs You might have seen packets of mushroom sold in the vegetable market. Page 6 You may have also seen fluffy, umbrella-like patches growing in moist soils or on rotting wood during the rainy season. We can observe this in figure 1.7. Let us find out what type of nutrients they need to survive and from where they get them. Figure 1.7 Packet of Mushrooms A mushroom growing on decayed material. There is a thought bubble given here. A picture of Bojo is next to it. Bojo wants to know how these organisms acquire nutrients. They do not have mouths like animals do. They are not like green plants as they lack chlorophyll and cannot make food by photosynthesis. Activity 1.2 Take a piece of bread and moisten it with water. Leave it in a moist warm place for 2-3 to three days or until fluffy patches appear on them. We can observe this in figure 1.8. What is the color of these patches? Observe the patches under a microscope or a magnifying glass. Write down your observations in the notebook. You will observe cotton-like threads spread on the piece of bread. Figure 1.8 Fungi growing on bread These organisms are called fungi. They have a different mode of nutrition. They absorb the nutrients from the bread. This mode of nutrition in which organisms take in nutrients from dead and decaying matter is called saprotrophic nutrition. Such organisms with saprotrophic mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs. Fungi also grow on pickles, leather, clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for a long time. During the rainy season, they spoil many things. Ask your parents about the menace of fungi in your house. The fungal spores are generally present in the air. When they land on wet and warm things, they germinate and grow. Now, can you figure out how we can protect our things from getting spoiled? There's a thought bubble given here. A picture of Paheli is next to it. Paheli is keen to know whether her beautiful shoes which she wore on special occasions were spoiled by fungi during the rainy season. She wants to know how fungi appear suddenly during the rainy season. Page 7 There's a thought bubble given here. Pictures of Paheli and Bojo are next to it. Bojo says once his grandfather told him that his wheat fields were spoiled by a fungus. He wants to know if fungi cause disease also. Paheli told him that many fungi like yeast and mushrooms are useful, but some fungi cause diseases in plants, animals, including humans. 
some fungi are also used as medicines. Some organisms live together and share both shelter and nutrients. This relationship is called symbiosis. For example, certain fungi live inside the roots of plants. The plants provide nutrients to the fungus and in return, the fungus provides water and certain nutrients. In organisms called lichens, a chlorophyll-containing partner, which is an alga, and a fungus live together. The fungus provides shelter, water, and minerals to the alga. And, in return, the alga prepares and provides food to the fungus. 1.5. How nutrients are replenished in the soil Have you seen farmers spreading manure or fertilizers in the fields or gardeners using them in lawns or in pots? Do you know why this is done? You learnt that plants absorb minerals and nutrients from the soil. So, their amounts in the soil keep on declining. Fertilizers and manures contain nutrients such as nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, etc. These nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil. We can grow plants and keep them healthy if we can fulfill the nutrient requirement of plants. Usually, crop plants absorb a lot of nitrogen and the soil becomes deficient in nitrogen. You learnt that though nitrogen gas is available in plenty in the air, plants cannot use it in the manner they can use carbon dioxide. They need nitrogen in a soluble form. The bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a usable form. But rhizobium cannot make its own food. So it often lives in the roots of a gram, peas, moong, beans and other legumes and provides them with nitrogen. In return, the plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. They thus have a symbiotic relationship. This association is of great significance for the farmers. They can reduce the use of nitrogenous fertilizers where leguminous plants are grown. Most of the pulses or dals are obtained from leguminous plants. Page 8 In this chapter, you learnt that most of the plants are autotrophs. Only a few plants are parasitic or saprotrophic. They derive nutrition from other organisms. All animals are categorized as heterotrophs since they depend on plants and other animals for food. Can we say that the insectivorous plants are partial heterotrophs? Keywords Autotrophic Chlorophyll Heterotrophs Host, insectivorous, nutrient, nutrition, parasite, photosynthesis, saprotrophs, saprotrophic, stomata. What you have learnt? 1. All organisms need food and utilize it to get energy for growth and maintenance of their body. 2. Green plants synthesize food for themselves by the process of photosynthesis. They are autotrophs. 3. Plants like Cuscuta are parasites. They take food 
from the host plant. 4. Plants use simple chemical substances like carbon dioxide, water and minerals for the synthesis of food. 5. Chlorophyll, water, carbon dioxide and sunlight are the essential requirements for photosynthesis. 6. Complex chemical substances such as carbohydrates are the products of photosynthesis. 7. Solar energy is absorbed by the chlorophylls present in leaves or plants. 8. Oxygen is produced during photosynthesis. 9. Oxygen released in photosynthesis is utilized by living organisms for their survival. 10. Many fungi derive nutrition from dead and decaying matter. They are saprotrophs. 11. A few plants and all animals are dependent on others for their nutrition and are called heterotrophs. Page 9 Exercise 1. Why do organisms take food? 2. Distinguish between a parasite and a saprotroph. 3. How would you test the presence of starch in leaves? 4. Give a brief description of the process of synthesis of food in green plants. 5. Show with the help of a sketch that plants are the ultimate source of food. 6. Fill in the blanks. A. Green plants are called blank since they synthesize their own food. B. The food synthesized by plants is stored as blank. C. In photosynthesis, solar energy is absorbed by the pigment called blank. D. During photosynthesis, plants take in blank and release blank gas. 7. Name the following. 1. A parasitic plant with yellow, slender and branched stem. 2. A plant that is partially autotrophic. 3. The pores through which leaves exchange gases. 8. Tick the correct answer. A. Cuscuta is an example of 1. Autotroph 2. Parasite 3. Saprotroph 4. Host B. The plant which traps and feeds on insects is 1. Cuscuta 2. China Rose 3. Pitcher Plant 4. Rose 9. Match the items given in column 1 with those in column 2. Column 1 Chlorophyll Nitrogen Cuscuta Animals Insects Column 2 Rhizobium Heterotrophs Pitcher plant Leaf Parasite 10. Mark T if the statement is true and F if it is false. 1. 
carbon dioxide is released during photosynthesis. 2. Plants which synthesize their food are called saprotrophs. 3. The product of photosynthesis is not a protein. 4. Solar energy is converted into chemical energy during photosynthesis. Page 10 11. Choose the correct option from the following. Which part of the plant takes in carbon dioxide from the air for photosynthesis? 1. Root hair 2. Stomata 3. Leaf veins 4. Petals 12. Choose the correct option from the following. Plants take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere mainly through their 1. Roots 2. Stem 3. Flowers 4. Leaves 13. Why do farmers grow many fruits and vegetable crops inside large greenhouses? What are the advantages to the farmers? Extended Learning Activities and Projects 1. Project Take a potted plant with broad leaves. Take two strips of black paper and cut out a small square in the centers. Cover a part of two leaves with these papers and secure them with paper clips. This can be observed in figure 1.9. Keep the plant in sunlight for 2 to 5 days. Observe the difference in the color of the covered and the uncovered portions on the leaf. Perform iodine test on this leaf. Did the two parts show different results? Now, take second leaf. Remove the strip and expose the covered part to the sunlight for two to three days and do the iodine test again. Describe your observations. Figure 1.9 Experiment to test the occurrence of photosynthesis. In this picture, there are lots of leaves. One of them is covered with a clip. 2. Visit a greenhouse if there is one near your place. Observe how they grow plants. Find out how they regulate the amount of light water and carbon dioxide to grow the plants. 3. Try growing a sweet potato just in water. Describe your experiment and observations. You can read more on this website www.phschool.com slash science slash biology underscore place slash biocoach slash photosynth slash overview dot htm Did you know? Light is so important to plants that their leaves grow in many patterns so as to absorb maximum sunlight. The chapter 1 of total 18 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Akash Ahuja Producer Vandana Arimardan Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India